Welcome to the Avalon Institute Wired to Lead podcast with your hosts Cameron Gott and Perry Smith. The Avalon Institute is on a mission to understand how individuals, teams, and leaders connect with others and the strategies they deploy to achieve the highest levels of success. Before each show, our guests take the Avalon Institute's Cognitive Peak Profile, available on our website at www.avalonleadership.com, and we discuss their unique cognitive leadership strengths. Thanks again for joining us, and here are your hosts, Cameron Gott and Perry Smith. Once again, welcome to the Wired to Lead podcast, your host, Perry Job Smith and Cameron Gott. Uh, today we have a lovely guest uh, that we'll be talking to in a few minutes, uh, Miss Sharon Roberts, um, who is uh, with us today all the way from uh, Derbyshire, or Derbyshire, I should say. Can you pronounce that for us, Sharon? Derbyshire. Derbyshire, okay. Derbyshire. Not far from Nottingham, uh, just yes. to give people an orientation yeah. on the map. And Sharon will be joining us in just a few minutes. Uh, Cam, as we get going for today, a lot of what we talk about here at the uh, Avalon Leadership Wire to Lead podcast is uh, what has your attention. And so I'd like to ask you what has your attention uh, this week has been, uh, we're, it's a Friday now. <laughs> I've had a number of things that have had my attention. Um, but I'd like to ask you that question. What has your attention today and, and maybe something you've been thinking about over the week? Um, that's a great question, Perry. You know, I've been, um, what has my attention is this whole concept of uh, a few terms I'm seeing out in social media circles uh, around concepts like mindfulness, um, self-awareness, um, emotional intelligence. And um, I'm seeing a number of uh, posts of uh, just from thought leaders in the field of, uh, well, if you want to do mindfulness, you need to really start with uh, emotional intelligence or if you want emotional intelligence you need to start with self-awareness and um, I think they're all important um, I come back to self-awareness and and how do you generate self-awareness and so um, the concept that that has my attention is this idea of metacognition metacognition is really just thinking about your thinking um, but it's also you know related to, to mindfulness of being present paying attention to your thoughts, your feelings, your messages, uh, messages in your body. Um, and I think that many people are not sure where to begin or how to do it. Um, for me, I wasn't, you know, it was difficult for me to do a long time ago because I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't aware of mindfulness. I wasn't aware of this idea of um, the power of, of present. And so in my work with um, coaching creative leaders, and uh, developing my coaching skills with with coaching there's this uh, practice of and a skill around curiosity uh, and coaching presence and asking powerful questions and it was through that process of this sort of questioning mind that allowed me to really um, uh, open the the book on curiosity i think if people are looking for ways to um, start to tap into self-awareness, into emotional intelligence, into metacognition, um, all these areas around inf uh, reflection, it start to ask questions um, and, and asking open questions. Uh, what do we know? Um, what is it that we might not be um, paying attention to, right? And I think that um, Noticing also how ego might be coming into play, the sense of identity and the narratives that we assign to um, ourselves and our situation, right? Like um, uh, when at all cost mm -hmm. is a very powerful mm -hmm. narrative that um, will, will really inform, um, again, who we are, who we think we are. We can challenge this sense of identity and we can make moves here, right? To be more um, aware. And when we're more aware, then we are more aware of opportunities. We're more aware of challenges in the moment and it makes us more um, uh, 
I, 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 I'm a, I don't want to say the word agile because that goes to that notion of, right, that agile concept. So yes, agile in the sense of more uh, dexterity, more agility, more flexibility in the moment, uh, to be able to, to, to react and respond and also be proactive and strategic. So that's, that's what my, that's, you asked me. And so I told you that's what's on, that's what's got my attention. <laughs> okay. Well, let, let me, I'm going to push back on that just a little bit because I, I, um, and I'm going to give you an example. So as an, as an ex athlete, um, I, I understand more, uh, with the work we've been doing at Avalon. And, and of course we'll be talking to, uh, to Sharon about her, uh, cognitive, a peak performance profile, how she processes information. So I, I was accused um, at times of, uh, by my coaches of, of being in my head, playing in my head, you know, get out of your head. Um, and, and obviously we're talking about some, some changing definitions and, and, and you know, understanding in, in terms of how our brains work and your leadership. The thing that I came to realize um, is that what, what was kind of a blanket definition um, when I played I got stronger as I played. Now I understand now uh, what I was doing is I was processing information about how I was seeing and hearing the game and how I was feeling the game. So I was decoding the game as I went on. Um, that, I, I guess, and, and, and I, I put it as a question, you know, would, would have been my definition of understanding my own thought processes and also understanding that, that in, in the uh, process of decoding that game, I was also adding to my list of, of things to do and things not to do. So taking my mistakes. Um, so in a way, uh, I think it's been interesting and, and we've worked with a number of other athletes. And so, you know, so again, going back to win at all costs or get out of your head. Um, what I would say is that uh, in agreement with you is that, is, you know, elements of metacognition and our understanding of how we process information, how we do things, how that informs the way that we physically, uh, approach the game as well or prepare for the game is very, very important. Um, you know, so, so, you know, ending on that point, I think that, uh, that, you know, let's, let's keep an open mind and, and also be curious about the, the idea that, you know, uh, there is a decoding process and entrepreneurs and business leaders and athletes uh, in a way, you know, what we're, what we're talking about here is we're talking about our wiring and everybody is different. Uh, but that that notion about how to decode, uh, hopefully that's what we'll be getting to here to, you know, to provide a little bit of structure around what that decoding process is uh, around these uh, these cognitive processes. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. And I, and I appreciate um, the sense of getting out of your head. I think that when I played sports um, in high school, um, th I was accused of that, too, of thinking too much of, of right. being in the head. So metacognition is not about thinking too much. Um, and I, and I like what you say in the sense of, you know, um, paying attention to what's going on, but then get out of your head, have your experience and then, uh, reflect on that experience. Right. So every change model that's out there has some element of this, of to, um, that pre contemplation to contemplation, to moving into action and then reflection. And um, that's one of the things that I think is underutilized in the, in the business world is um, the desire or the willingness to uh, pause and reflect on an experience. And it doesn't have to be this, it doesn't have to be this long process. Uh, it can be very quick um, and very fast, but it can also be very fruitful. That's correct. That's correct. And, and, uh, it, it's very, very interesting because again, going back to the analogy of playing football. So, so your reflective process uh, after a game is to watch film and see what you did and see what you did well, see what you did wrong. And, and uh, uh, pretty much the emphasis is, is see how you screwed up. <laughs> this is what you did wrong. Don't do that again. Um, and that's, that's about as reflective as it gets uh, because the next step is we have a new game to play. Um, so, so it, it's, it, it doesn't really foster so much about this notion about curiosity. It says, okay, let's put some stops in the road and, and don't do that again and, and, uh, and you know, make sure that that's not part of your process the next time. Right. The thing about curiosity is that it opens us up to um, other areas. You know, we talk about top, bottom, 
parts of the brain, the curiosity opens us up to more of this top part of the brain, right? This curiosity and um, not so much in the limbic and this sort of the fear-based, right? The pressure to change, uh, I don't screw up, is a, is a form of uh, accountability that it works to a degree, but for smart people who are creative, you know, being able to, to not have that pressure and really be around, focused on the opportunity, curiosity, and then that's where that disruptive innovation comes into play. That's correct. That's correct. Well, I, I like to talk about, and, and then let's segue into talking with Sharon here a little bit about what has my attention, Cam, which is the, I just finished a great book um, by uh, Meg Jay, uh, uh, University of uh, Virginia, uh, called Supernormal. Yeah. And uh, you're familiar with Supernormal? I'm familiar with Meg Jay, so yeah. I know that she works with uh, millennials. Um, yeah. That's her specialty, yeah. Well, the, the, the book Supernormal is about, um, you know, the caption is the untold story of adversity and resilience and what, it, it, you know, people's individual stories and formulas about how they overcome adversity and, uh, and become resilient, uh, you know, in, in the face of, of challenges. That would be the bridge to introducing our guest, Ms. Sharon Roberts from the UK, who talks a lot about adversity and resilience. Uh, Sharon is a international speaker. She is a facilitator, a business and resilience coach. Uh, she's also the director of her company's uh, vision development um, and does a lot of video production, and travels the world, interviews wonderful people. And full disclosure, uh, Sharon is also the managing director of the Avalon Institute in the UK. <laughs> we are also very appreciative of. Uh, but Sharon is, uh, again, is uh, joining us today from uh, Derbyshire. Did I pronounce it the right way again? You absolutely did. Yes, Wonderful. correct. And, and just to orient people, so, so in the UK, Derbyshire is not far from the, the city of Nottingham. And that would be about 129 miles uh, northwest, I believe, of London. About. So you're, yeah, <laughs> so you're about, exactly. So you're about an uh, hour and a half or so from London. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you make it down there a lot. And, and just to contextualize for the audience as well, uh, Sharon's Town, the, the uh, most famous people that I could look up were uh, John Hurt, the actor, and uh, Jack O'Connell, uh, who was in the movie, the recent movie called Unbroken. Just trying to, trying to give a plug for doing a little bit of research. So Sharon, <laughs> as I watched your videos, you have been described as creative dynamic. You had wow. people to think about what they are doing and why they are doing it and why as we discuss your cognitive preferences around your associative thinker or fast thinker is very, very key because you are a associative preference thinker. And as we break that down, we talk of it's like a muscle. Prefer to think associatively. You think as, as more of a dot connector. So if you get a central idea, you'll start adding or subtracting different pieces around this central idea. But as an associative thinker, the central idea is very, very key to a starting point or perhaps an ending point for you. And that means also that you're fluid in your thinking and you are very flexible in terms of uh, strategy or strategic approach. Um, I'm, I'm going to have Cam jump in a little bit here right now too, because one of the things that I do want to say though is that, is that you have been quoted uh, as, as saying that people should know their purpose. You encourage people to know their purpose. And so in your speaking engagements, that's how, in, in a way, that's how you lead off. Is that correct? And, and I'd like you to get to maybe, maybe speak a little bit to that and talk about what has your attention right now. Um, well, the first thing is, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there, vision is no more. So now um, vision hasn't been around for the last oh, few okay. years. Okay. Yeah, so it's, so it's just completely been myself, which has been absolutely incredible and and just um back to finding myself within that that so that was a big thing so going back to what has our attention i think the biggest thing for me is i think we think too much and we don't feel so it's about that 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 feeling our, our way of what we're doing and i think i think for me um absolutely having a new breath of life and passion and driving forward and, and, and just making the most of every single day. But we kind of get lost 
in what we're supposed to be doing and going back to what Cam was saying about you know this all, all win-win and and you know sometimes being mindful of where we are with things I think for me I wore my um god workaholic badge of honor see it was stamped there I had it stamped all over me just to make sure you know I would work every single hour that was possible um and I think looking at looking back on that it didn't do me any good and and all the rubbish that you know I fed myself in my mind oh it's it's, it's going to be for my son it's for the legacy it's for the future it wasn't it was to keep myself busy it was not look mm. it wasn't it wasn't being mindful and it wasn't being true to myself or just having that in the words of Oprah your authentic self got lost in all the bullshit of, of the corporate world and everything else that was happening around. So, um, so yeah, so my attention now is, is, is back to looking at what is happening in the leadership world and, and making sure that leaders don't lead from ego, that we lead to service others and not get lost in the process of looking for the big office. Or the flash car and everything else, and I'll stop talking. There you go. No, no, I want you. We want you to keep talking. I mean, the, the question that I have is: is so you've changed this direction? You, you, you seem to, you know, indicate that uh, that also involves more self-reflection, as Cam had mentioned before. Um, are, are you getting resonance with your message? Do, do, are, are people hearing you when when you're working with clients? Um, you know, for a few yeah. clients you're working with over in the UK. Definitely, and and I think um, one of the one of the things is that I spend a lot of time working with people in the entertainment world and in the business world. Mm. And people, I think when we go to any networking event or go to somewhere, people always want to say, "Well, what do you do? What what is it you do?" And I think, "Oh, here we go. What is it?" And I think for me, it's I help people get their great ideas, get their their work out into the world, with a bit of focus, a bit of direction, and a bit of clarity, and just get them to think. What are you sitting around waiting for? You know, it's just getting things into action. So I think finding your purpose, more and more people are realizing they don't have to stay somewhere where they're unhappy. They can move on mm -hmm. and they can challenge the environment that they're in. It's not always easy, but so life in a way, isn't easy. Yeah. So what, in a, in, a, in a way, what you do is you help people find their bigger game. Is that... oh, I, I like that. I'm going to make a note of that. That sounds so much better than what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I help people find their bigger game and their, and their, their bigger focus. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's really powerful. And that's, uh, and it has to be fulfilling for them and also fulfilling for you. So uh, what do you get from that? Like when you help people do that, how do you benefit Sharon? Oh, it's going to sound so soft, but I feel like it's a, marshmallow it just might makes you feel like it's like a hot chocolate it's just it's just just knowing that you've helped somebody else move forward out of a mindset or out of a thinking process or made them realize that their environment that they're in doesn't define who they are or where they need to be or, and can help them look at this there's so much more to the world so much more so so yeah it just excites me it just just gets my fire fired up even more and, and Sharon, while uh, what, what we, I mentioned that you're an active associative in terms of your processing, and you have taken our assessment called the um, uh, Cognitive Peak Performance Survey, so I'm going to go ahead and throw your scores up on the screen so anyone watching can take a look uh, as well by uh, this diagram that, that indicates uh, you know, what we mean when we say you're an active associative thinker. Um, the way that we describe it, and this is a pie chart for anyone not watching uh, on the video, uh, Sharon came up, um, and the percentages, you know, would indicate active, a uh, 61% associative thinker. In other words, her brain activates for associative thinking uh, or non-systematic thinking, uh, but very creative, as I said, uh, very flexible in her, her approach and, and uh, the way she processes information. Uh, and then she's 39% uh, sequential. So you can kind of look at that and, uh, and get an indication of that. Now, we, we also describe it as being like a, a bit of a muscle. I mean, Sharon's uh, sequential thinking and systems-based uh, thinking is certainly intact. Uh, it is functioning very well. <laughs> but, you know, as we say, it, uh, it, it's a bit like a muscle and you have to you kind of have to activate that. And there are ways that, uh, that one can do that. Um, it does require uh, more focus uh, and can also be a little bit uh, tiring if you're in an environment where you're forced to think as a linear or systems thinker. Um, so. You know, taking it in, in a bit uh, smaller chunks or smaller doses, uh, it is there. Um, 
it just it just activates somewhat differently for information. That's impressive. So, can you speak a little bit to this uh, your focus around resilience, Sharon? And I'm um, um, curious about just a little bit more about that part of your offering um, and, and what that means to you. Resilience. I, I I think resilience means personally to me. It's not always about bouncing back. We have this belief that we are resilient, and adversity does you good. And and sometimes um, it's not about bouncing back quicker. Sometimes resilience is about pausing. It's about um, for me. It's about looking around and working out where do I need to be and where don't I want to be. And I made a note of something you said earlier on, um, Cam. You know where it, where is your attention at the moment, or where are you paying attention to? And I think for one of the things I've learned over the years is where are you paying attention, but also what are you avoiding? Because if we're if we're you know it's it's looking at well what are you avoiding? So I think for resilience for me and a lot of the work that I do around resilience is is getting people to look at how re resilient they are in different areas and also resilient communities and resilient young people. Mm, yes. Um, we don't look at how communities um, can strengthen and come together and just work together or how, you know, inspiring a community can be to somebody. Uh, so I think resilience uh, for me is, is, is looking at all the things that I've been through and there's been some really dark times where I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I don't, I this just, you know, bring it on. What more have you got? Let's, pile it on the table I can eat pretty fast but bring it quicker so um and I think for me it, it was really going back to that old taking a bit of a time off resilience isn't about beating coming back fighting harder it's about evaluating it's about pausing um it's about looking at you know we have all these fantastic strategies and we have business plans and people have these strategies in a five-year plan and I think one thing I've realized over the years we don't tend to put into the plan what about our elf? What if we got ill? Well, if this didn't happen, well, if the partner of the other organization goes off sick, well, if this happens, and I'm not saying you can, you know, plan for all those kind of things, but we upgrade our phones quicker than we upgrade, you know, our mindset sometimes or looking at what we, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, look, or, or looking at what, oh, we'll download another app. Yes. Brilliant. But I really don't want to go to the doctors and get that lump checked out. So, um, Right, you talk about ways that we avoid, right? We go stand in line and wait for the, the next version of the iPhone, right? Or, yeah, 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 exactly. We'll avoid it, we'll avoid it. Don't want to do it, don't want to do it. I'll, I'll, and I just used to go and clean cupboards and do everything else. And I'd go and stay at friends and they'd come back and go, you've cleaned all the cupboards? Yes, because I know I need to look at something else, but I don't want to look at that yet because right. that, that is a bit fearful. Um, so, so part of this idea of resilience is this... Um, as I'm listening to you, it's, it's really about uh, not fearing uh, the present. You know, I think about Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, uh, oh, yes. right, from, yes. from several years back. But um, there's so much available in, in this moment right now. So presence, um, perspective. Absolutely. Is what I'm hearing. And then the, the um, n not being afraid to share. Right. You talk about resilient communities. It's that mm. vulnerability and that openness to share what's going on and be transparent. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Cause I, I, I think that's missing quite a lot. And especially in leadership, I think the transparency and authenticity is, is missing. And I think lots of leaders are leading through people through fear and panic or, and, and some of the great people who are working under, under leaders won't go to them because they're just worried about being criticized or just, or just being told that idea won't work. And I think one thing for me as, as a child, yeah, we had such a very, very terrible upbringing. But one of the great things I remember was if I ever wanted anything, I would go to my mum and my dad and my dad would say, that's great. How are you going to make it happen? And I followed that all the way through to with my son when he used to come back and say, I want to do X, Y, and Z. It's great. How are you going to make it happen? Instead of just saying it can't be done. Because I would think, well, why? Why can't it be done? Right, so that um, the sense of hope. Yes, I think the sense of hope has, 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 has kept me afloat in a way. Um, but it's not always been there. 
So, and, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? Resilience, we can go on so many workshops, so much training, but I think it's resilience to each and every person is going to be different. I've, I've spent time with talking to people over the years who are waiting for a kidney transplant. So, you know, somebody the other day I was talking to, have got a brain tumour. Resilience for all of us is going to be completely different at different times. And I think for me, resilience is about realising how far you've come what has been the biggest challenges you've overcome and the biggest fears and it got you this far so just keep moving in the words of you know rocky keep moving forward keep going keep getting back up well you know sharon one of the things that you actually said that i picked up from one of your uh, one of your promo videos is you talk about adding value today adding yes. value today can you can you speak to that and, and and how did that come about when you say add value today because i think sometimes we need to look at well you know how can I make sure that what I do today will make someone's life better tomorrow or it make my life better my life better tomorrow um, so it's not about just giving lip service and having a code on the wall and saying this is what we do this is our this is our mission statement you know mission statements are all great on a piece of paper but it, it's the it's the value and I can't remember who said it I think it might have been Peter Drucker that said, skills can be taught, but values, it, values are so deep and so inherent of us. It's, so it's looking at, well, what values have we got? And how can we pass those values on? And how can we encourage that other people realize it, it is about having that personal mission, not just a piece of paper. I see, yeah. Uh, you know, one, one of the things that uh, Sharon, you and I have spoken before and, and that, that you talked about here a little bit is, um, your entrepreneurial process and the, the thing that this is an associative thought for the audience what I attach that to is is what, what is what defines the entrepreneurial process or values today as you see it in the UK and and again let's tie this to Sharon's preferences she, here it is and she she is flexible in her thinking she's associative in her thinking um, uh, you know Sharon I'll call you out on this you said you know from time to time you make it in a, a little bit of trouble because <laughs> yeah just a bit yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about you know social or, or cultural conventions uh you know and the difference between what we might see over here in America which is you know we're told move fast move forward just do it uh that that's a little bit different I, I think and and but but I will say this and I qualify this everything that I keep hearing uh is is actually wonderful news and and we have connected with a number you know through you and, and other folks a number of entrepreneurs over in the uk uh who have great visions um you know even in the face of brexit that, that's come around they said well you know we're, we're, we'll go out and get after it we'll just we'll just go ahead and do it so let me go back to my original question um so forging ahead uh dealing with adversity but again let's talk about that thinking uh and how does it align with what you're seeing today over in the uk with the people you work with i think with some of the people i work with that they, they 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 see the bigger picture um some people do some people w will never see the bigger picture uh, so some people will see that things will be changing and we can adapt and i think it's adaptability isn't it so it's it's you know we, we can stand firm and strong no matter what it's us but it's being able to adapt to the situation and to the marketplace as well and not watching too many you know there's, there's been a time when i've, I've had over the years too many people have watched too many TV programs on entrepreneurship or start out to start your own business or go in front of people for pitching and then they have a great idea and then they just want to make it happen there and then without doing the research, without doing the detail, without doing the logistics behind it. So I think it's that the principle is the same. Um, it's making sure you take that time to really look at, well, just because it's a great idea doesn't mean it's going to work, but right. it's also making sure that it's okay i think the best leaders in the world are not afraid to fail so give it a go but do research you know don't just don't just see all the shiny bits which are on the christmas tree don't just take all the shiny things there's a lot that comes behind the scenes and i think yes i've definitely got into trouble over the years because i've spent a, i've spent a lot of time in the states observing interviewing leaders and then bringing some of those formats back into the UK and, and people just saying it just won't work here because because we, we, we're not that driven, we're not that forward and you're too aggressive. Um, so it is a case of looking at how do we adapt to that because we can't all keep sitting around and just waiting for things to happen or the, the, there's never going to be a time is going to be right. So if you've got an idea, you, I think it's seeing, it's seeing that 
spotting something in the marketplace, isn't it? Spot, spotting an opportunity. And, and I think more, more now than ever, we can spot an opportunity and get things to market and get the product done and get go from concept idea to the marketplace so quick. So um, I think that's where I've seen a massive growth in entrepreneurs over this side. And well, um, those, those are, I mean, that's, that's great because honestly, Sharon, you know, it also goes back to, as I take my glasses off, it also goes back to, to a lot of the reasons we're even talking today. I mean, I mean, let's be real. We connected on social media on Twitter and, and uh, I, I was, you know, reaching out uh, as we were developing Avalon and looking for partners in the UK. And when I typed in entrepreneurial or entrepreneur, uh, you have a large presence on social media and you came up and you wow. came up repeatedly. Um, and I said, well, this is a person that, that we need to connect with. And so we were able to connect, uh, you know, by virtue of this technology and, and, uh, and develop this relationship. And so I'm completely with you on, on that, you know, choices are, you know, we have such an array of choices, uh, so, you know, such an array of opportunities to be able to connect with people, to exchange ideas. Uh, why not do it? Uh, it? You know, set the goal. Let's get some partners. Uh, you know, I have uh, other, other folks in the UK and I have uh, some family members who live in the UK. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a huge Anglophile. And so, so I said, we need to, we need to actually make this uh, uh, more defined. And so we were able to do it. And, you know, again, you've connected with uh, us with uh, a number of other folks, uh, Groundwork um, out of Nottingham as well, which we'll, we, you know, we can talk forever. We'll talk about them uh, at some point. Uh, uh, Bert and Ellie Ice Cream. Uh, yes. Great conversations with the founder of Bert and Ellie Ice Cream. And, just, and we exchanged ideas uh, about what he was trying to build. And, and you know, so, so you know, for, for that, as far as that goes, you know, creating those opportunities. Because the opportunities exist. And, and we, can, we can sail along and complain about the things that stand in our way. And we can say, that's an excuse, you know, I, I, I'll make an excuse and say I didn't get there because of that or something I couldn't, you know, I couldn't control or I couldn't think my way through, you know, and, and that, that's, a, that's a way to do it. Uh, but, but I can say that, that I would definitely say that our, our, our ability to be able to connect and have this conversation um, uh, very much in line with the idea that, that, you know, make your own future find your own future, do it the right way. Um, and, and I would encourage any entrepreneur, again, to, to, uh, to think about their own thinking and, and how, that, how that affects their choices. I'm gonna jump in here, Perry, if that's okay. Please. Um, so, Sharon, it's, uh, I wanna, you, you're very comfortable with analogy, right? You talk about the hot chocolate and the marshmallow. So we're gonna play a little metaphor game, if that's okay. Okay. Is that all right? So, yeah. you know, just speaking to this uh, active associative, you're, you're very much comfortable with that, in tune with it. And um, you know, I think that um, for the active associative, it's, I'm, I'm an active associative myself, uh, I look at it like a, a large uh, Macy Day parade balloon. I don't know if you're familiar with our our Macy Day parade balloon, but there's giant, like a Snoopy balloon yep, that's floating absolutely. above the corral, you know, it's sort of buoyant and it can kind of move with, uh, with uh, the wind and, and uh, conditions. Um, and we can have people who are uh, in this place of sort of uh, an associative dissonance where I think for associatives, it's very important to know what they're, tethering their balloon to. And um, when we tether our balloons to like old ancient rules or ego or false narratives, um, it, it, can, it can really be a train wreck uh, for individuals. And, and as I'm listening to you, um, you have a, you've really tethered your balloon to these elements that are just so empowering and, and powerful, like personal mission, process, principle. You just said something about, uh, you know, a passion tethered in reality, right? And when you work, when you speak with entrepreneurs, it's like, yeah, if it's a great idea, great, but how feasible is it? Do your research, right? So tethered in reality, tethered in fact, right? Of, uh, will, is, is this something the market wants? Um, 
And so I just wanted to, to point to that, that when we have an, um, when we're preferent in the active realm, having these tethers to, again, these positive constructs or structures can be just um, so powerful. I'm just noticing that, that you are tethered well to these, oh. uh, these areas. I've just, again, it's an observation. Thank you. And You're welcome. <laughs> I like the I, I like that because I like in my in my crazy little mind there's sometimes there's a train so the, the train goes through different stations and sometimes if I don't like things I'll just I'll just leave it on the stations it's like well I'll leave that baggage I'm not picking it up drop it on that station and drop it on that and then then I get back on the train with with new thoughts and new things and just think well I'll, I'll take that but and I think I think for also for resilience I think being positive in the world that I'm in and in myself has also been the blind spot because I used to think why can't I come through this dark stage quicker because I'm a positive person and I've got books and books and books and a library full of positive books and I was reading Peter Trucker when I was you know in my teenage years so why can't I get through this quicker I should know better and I've, I've done work on mental health and going through men you know mental health myself it was like I should know better I, I I'm, be, I'm positive and I think over the years I've learned that all the best affirmations are no good unless they actually have some kind of action to follow up some of the things so it's no good sitting here saying I'm going to be rich and I'm going to be a millionaire if I'm not going to move out of the office and not do anything and um, but also realizing that there are some things in life no matter how positive you are the dark times will come and grab hold of you and I think you know last week I said to somebody I, I feel like sometimes the grim reaper is keeps filling my glass up or has been filling my glass up over the years and instead of having an hangover from gin I've had a hangover from having to deal with so much trauma and other things and, and I think it's positivity does help but it's also I don't know there's just something in here and I feel it so inside that I've got a lot to do and I don't plan to die until I'm well into my 90s doing something crazy um, and bizarre so I think the train the driving forward and for you saying that come that, that I I'm really touched and honored that you would see you know that that in me so thank you so much well as I as I say to my clients who uh, it's uh, I it's not it's not what I say it's I'm just reflecting back what I'm seeing so oh, thank you. you know Sharon what one of the things in, in the coaching practice that, that uh, we have at Avalon and I've worked with a number of high associatives as well um, what's a little bit different about your train metaphor is that you say, if it's not working, I'll dump it off at the station. Um, you know, can you know, please, please comment on this, but you know, some associates that, that uh, we've worked with tend to just gather uh, things and continue to drag, drag them along behind <laughs> the bag and forget that, Oh, wait a sec. I need to dump that thing off. You know, maybe it's a business process. Maybe it's a, uh, uh, even a relationship. Um, but they, they tend to collect things and then, and then all of a sudden look around and say, wow, there's a lot of clutter here. Uh, yeah. it's very easy for a high associate to add pieces. Uh, it's sometimes a little bit more difficult, I think, to, to peel those pieces away and say, it just doesn't apply anymore because no. the one, the one and, and that's the thing about, about the flexibility and perhaps this is a blind spot, uh, to address the flexibility of a high associate is you can always kind of contextualize why something should be there. You know, that's the, the beauty of flexible thinking. You can say, well, that kind of does relate. Uh, and if it kind of does relate, maybe it should stay. Uh, when, you know, maybe in the long run, it should have gone away. And, yeah. and again, I, I equate it very much because we talk about business and Avalon deals with a lot of entrepreneurs and, and uh, thinking in business. And, and so that goes a little bit toward the systems thinking where we say, you know, it, it, what's the ROI, you know, what, what for, of this thing that you're still, you know, holding on to. So. No, that, that absolutely works. And one of my exercises with entrepreneurs when, I'm, when I've got a big group of them is I ask one person and um, I get everybody to give them their bag. So there's one person in the room and everybody goes and puts their bag or their rucksack on that person until you can no longer see that person because they're just covered in loads of bags and handbags and rucksacks. That's great. And then I say, well, that's what we do. It's just ditch the guilt, drop it, drop the baggage. Don't carry it on your back. We've got enough things to carry without everybody else's crap there. So no, no, don't do it. That's perfect. That's great. The, great. Um, 
Yeah, so to piggyback on that and what Perry was saying was that, um, that, that active associatives can have a, like they can have that big front end loader, right? They'd love to pick up stuff, but somehow if they put something down, there can be this sense of failure, a sense of guilt, yeah. like, uh, and just like, again, the dopamine, the stimulation of grabbing something new, um, it's like, it just comes on. It's like, I want to do this. But then that, uh, again, it starts to pile up. And so I really appreciate the train and your own process there for taking stuff and setting aside um, what I refer to in my coaching is completion, right? It's just a completing the cycle of like, you know what? I don't need this. And that uh, light and lean is the way yeah. to go. And I Absolutely. think light and lean for associatives can be very powerful. It's like, you know, t take the, the, the things that work for you and move forward. And it's about uh, movement and, and momentum um, and, and these cycles. The other thing I want to say is I think that um, often – when I talk about the CPP with my clients, um, and again, the sequential is more about um, wired for evidence and process. The associative is wired more for context and experience. They, they have this sense of, oh, well, because I'm an associative, I, I, I can't do process. And that's, uh, that's not true at all. Um, and that right there, you're articulating a process that works for you, right? of oh. again this you know as you go along here these train stations here are these stations where i'm I, it's a regular exercise in unloading because um well i can speak for myself i have a tendency to load right i have a tendency to pick up stuff um pick it up and so how do i drop this off and again uh stay true to my mission stay on the track whatever track that is um and keep moving so well, you Definitely. know, Cam, it, I, I can also tell you this, that uh, in, in business development, um, you know, working with especially newer entrepreneurs or people who are, are trying to talk about, uh, you know, the formation of a new startup or how to, how to bring an idea to market, um, it, it, the, the conventional way to look at this is to say, uh, let's, let's go from point A to point Z and let's try and throw in as much as we can. It doesn't necessarily have to be, again, a systematic process to get there or linear. The very, very difficult part is to, once you finish that, to then look at it and say, now let's go back from point Z to point A. Because that's when people's minds really start to say, oh, ooh, you know, uh, I, that's, that's the hard part. Because it's, again, for, for an active associative, uh, in many, many cases, we say it, 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 it's a hunting metaphor you know let's move forward okay. I'm chasing the quarry i'm always going to move forward and you know I'll, I'll overcome the obstacles i've done my planning uh and then eventually we'll get to the prize um but saying okay i have the prize now let's track back that is that can be very very hard to do um but i think i think it's also somewhat necessary for you know for for success or a way to look at it um if if just to just to kind of promote that flexibility in terms of all right well what you know is the, is that process have we have we covered everything we need to cover here because that way you can uncover additional blind spots sometimes right well listen i have i have a question for sharon which as we continue to move forward here and and uh we will be winding down in a few minutes uh, gosh that's sharon, gone fast I, it has we can talk <laughs> i think we've said it all we've covered a lot uh, here's a question for you, because I, I know that this is also very important to you, and you, 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 uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of resonance uh, from you and so through the social media channels. Um, opportunities for uh, female empowerment, female entrepreneurs in, in Britain, uh, in the UK. How, how are you seeing it? Uh, let's talk to the audience a little bit and say, uh, what, what's changing? Um, you know, what, what's positive? And, and then what are some of the, the obstacles that, that, that you're seeing over there as well? Uh, that, that are standing in the way of that success? I think what, what I see is happening is that um, more f more female entrepreneurs are, are, are coming forward, more 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 mums, more working mums, um, and they're beginning to realise that they they can do things, that they can, you know, have the, have, you know, run a business, run the house and do other things as well. And I think also the, the well-established entrepreneurs and the women in leadership of making moves and moving forward and, and shouting louder than it's ever been as well. And I think there's more and more women 
who are coming into the media that are making changes and are shouting bigger about making things happen and one of the people i would really love to make sure i connect you guys with is um stephanie millward who is the paria olympian and um, yes. and has got i'm not joking in her in her apartment she's got a mannequin that is just full of gold and silver medals pinned all over it and she her, her, her commitment and her drive and everything that she's been through and the challenges that she's been through she just comes back and she's focused and she's she's really driving forward so you you've got steph in the olympic arena for the sports bit but then there's another incredible woman called emma jones emma jones um wrote a book called uh, go global which i just happen to have here we go look just to make sure i spoke to you guys about it yeah so there we go oh it's cool okay go global so Emma Jones um, really is a, a power force and an influencer within the world of entrepreneurs and, and driving forward and making sure that more women do come forward and we realise that um, supporting each other instead of, you know, stabbing each other in the back is, um, is actually more supportive and, and growing together, working on collaboration instead of in isolation. And I think that's what's happening more. There's, you know, there's, there's, there's more women doing oh it's just, it's just incredible it's just going to be an incredible movement forward and and there's so many exciting things to come for next year and and one of the things i'm working on is is with the ted talks and the ted Le lester to do you know international women's week around ted talks and and a key influencer who you really need to speak to both of you is lily and betty from time inc who oh, Yes, you mentioned uh, her before. Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely follow up because she is out of out of all the talks I've seen over the last few years. Lillian talks about influencers, the world of influencers, and what makes them so great, and and, what, and the areas they're moving. So if we talk about entrepreneurship, she's the one that you want to be talking to and and talking about. You know, all the influencers that are in the marketplace at the minute and the ones that we keep an eye on and the ones that are online and, and not the ones that we all think are there, the ones that are invisible but making such an impact in other people's lives. Well, uh, listen, I can tell you what's so refreshing about this is that if we're, if we're following the headlines and we're, we're saying, you know, dark clouds are, are floating over, <laughs> over the UK and Brexit has done this and, and you listen to the, to the mouthpieces of that, uh, you know, I, it's a separate discussion on Nigel Farage. We won't go there. Uh, interesting character, um, and then and then you know things that are happening in the U.S. But what we're talking about here is we're talking about opportunities and people making these opportunities and finding ways to connect. It goes back to what I said before. Um, you know this this leads to opportunity. It leads to hope. Uh, it, it leads to new a new sense of freedom and new leadership models. And I love what you said about this, you know, the notion about connecting laterally almost, you know, that's, that's what you refer to because that is round table leadership. That's what we're based on. That's what Absolutely. Avalon is based on. Let's have a conversation. Mm. Let's talk about the process. Talk about the ideas that, that can, you know, freely flow around that process. Uh, and then let's talk about a system to, to actually make it, make it happen. You know, let's, let's drive to that success. So I'm, I'm glad I'm very, very encouraged. Um, and and you know I, I think uh, I think there's huge upside here. The world's changing <laughs> at a pace that that you know perhaps our generation or my generation sometimes struggles uh, to keep up with. But uh, but it it these are the modes here. As I said, you know the, the new modes of entrepreneurial uh, thought and thought leadership uh, that will continue to drive uh, business and connections forward here. Um, and you know I, if uh, if I weren't convinced, we wouldn't be talking. Oh, brilliant! That's good. Yeah. Okay. Cam, master contextualization uh, uh, expert, give us a little context here. Well, I, what I, I, again, it's part of uh, the contextualization comes from my active listener. And, and, and um, oh, and know, okay. these are the immortal domains. I have to jump in because we haven't, we haven't touched on the fact that, that, uh, that Sharon is a very, very active uh, observer. And we talked about this and, and you know, I'm looking at her scoring right here, balanced listener, active observer. These are the immortal domains. And of course we'll have Sharon back and, and talk about the, uh, the different uh, uh, other areas of the brain's, uh, brain or regions that, that activate for information. That is the mover, observer, reader, talker, and listener. So we have another round um, to put you uh, on the spot for Sharon, but go ahead, Cam. 
I, I interrupted you. Well, that's all right. I appreciate that. Um, and as I'm just l listening and, and watching, um, Sharon, it's just it's fun to to watch it as you respond to Perry's question around opportunity for female entrepreneurship. Uh, where you went was to the people, right? To your connections, right? Naming names and uh, just thinking about those people. So as you, you know, where you began was there's too much thinking and not enough feeling. And there was yeah. your feeling, there was your feeling coming out in this, these people and the amazing things they're doing, right? Um, um, really striving for change and um, bringing courage. I mean, there's, there's courage out there, right? In the sense of um, these women coming forward and um, really sharing their voice and being heard. And it's really powerful and touching, and you're almost like a conduit for that, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. And, uh, I've never thought of it that way, but <laughs> I like that. And, and already I've got a list of other people. It's I like, know, you're, you know, yeah. yeah. Yes. The active is that, this yeah. Is going, going yeah. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So um, it's just, it's fun to, to have, to be a part of this conversation, right? This conversation of possibility and, um, and to listen, again, as Perry was saying, um, we can get our information from, you know, we tend to get our information from select channels, right? Uh, with, with social media, with Facebook, with uh, certain news outlets, and the whole idea of confirmation bias that is out there of um, reinforcing what we already want to believe, uh, that you're really challenging that notion right, is uh, p turning that on its head. And that's often what a, a, a either a, a balanced access person who has access to both the, the sequential and the associative, and, and also high associatives too, is to, to, to take that and really um, flip it upside down, uh, in, in a sense, disrupt, and this positive uh -huh. disruption that is happening. So it's just fun to watch and, and uh, we're excited to be a part of, uh, of what you're doing and uh, just can't wait to see more. Oh, Cam, thank you so much because disrupt, disrupting, so I can't even say it, um, but I think sometimes, you know, people look at me and well, especially when I'm asking a group of corporate people to do some bizarre exercise or a group of leaders um, to draw around their hand. So, you know, and you can see that these, some of these people, I don't want to draw around my hand, but they'll draw, I get them to draw around my, their hands. And I say to them, I want you to think of the five things or the five resources that you're not utilizing at the moment. And I think sometimes we, f we forget that we've got so many great resources and so many great connections just like this and the Avalon and what Avalon stands for. And I know that on my end, I, I'm not utilizing you guys enough. Um, so I'll be coming back for more. So, um, so thank you. <laughs> oh, oh and, and we're not going anywhere. So, so believe me, thank you for that. But, um, you know, I, I think we need to wind down, but I wanted to thank you again, Sharon, for, for joining us today. Uh, I know you took time out of your busy schedule, uh, your high paced schedule, um, which you're comfortable <laughs> yes. doing. And I do appreciate your sitting with us today. Uh, the, the, the thought I did want to leave anybody listening or actually viewing and, and listening at the same time is uh, they, you can come and see what we're talking about at Avalon. You can take the cognitive peak performance survey. Uh, it's, you join Avalon for free. Uh, you can then purchase the assessment. Um, if you're interested in doing a deeper dive, uh, we have other tools as well that we can certainly assist and, and have a, an array of coaches who can, who can help you with this. Uh, because as, as any entrepreneur will always tell you, no one is generally never, no one is quite satisfied. And you know, so, so allowing us to help you uncover blind spots, uh, tap into the things that you may have not, not necessarily seen or, or been aware of, uh, a hidden asset. Um, is something that, that we're very, very passionate about and we do it every single day. Uh, and, and, you know, again, as, as, it, as it is for us, it's not work, um, but we want people to join the cause, join Avalon. Let's talk about this thinking because this is the way that we move business forward. It's the way that we move forward as people. 
Uh, it's the way that we come together as humans. So thank you again, Sharon. Cam, thank you very much for your time today as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cam, is, Cam is the anchor. And I also would like to give a plug uh, for those that are working on the backside uh, of the Avalon Le uh, Leadership Podcast. And that's uh, Brendan Kalnacki of Kalnacki Holdings uh, based out of Washington, D.C. He is our producer. He is the one who fixes all of our gaffes and makes this thing uh, intelligent. <laughs> so thanks again, folks. You guys have a great day. And please check us out another time for a broadcast of the Wired to Lead podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Been a pleasure. Thanks, Sharon. Thank, Thank you. you. Many thanks to our guest today. And if you enjoyed this podcast and want to know more about how you are wired to lead, go to www.avalonleadership.com, where our roundtable is always open. Once again, the assessment is called the Cognitive Peak Profile, and it might actually change your life. For more info on the Avalon Institute and our advisory services and other products, send an email to info at avalonleadership.com. Special thanks to our producer, Brendan Kaunaki of Washington, D.C.-based Kaunaki Media. Please visit his website at www.kaunakimedia.com. Thanks for joining us, and please tune in to our next broadcast, always available on SoundCloud.